Okay, welcome back to Concept Mastery lesson. Now, we are going to continue where we stop on uh, decimals. Alright, so let's look at uh, how we convert decimals into fractions in the simplest form. So it's actually quite easy, uh, like 0 0.3, what is the fraction? Now, 0 0.3 is a one decimal place. So if it's a one decimal place, when you write as a fraction, then the denominator is a 10 because uh, one decimal place, so there is one zero. So what fraction is that? That will be three over 10. Now 0 0.9 is also one decimal place, so there will be a 10, right? 10 below, right? And uh, the nine, nine is on top, so nine over 10. So how do you change the decimal into, or how do you change the fractions into decimal? You look at the number of decimal places. For example, if you have 6.9, now, how to change it to fraction? You can actually break up, all right, 6.9 is six holes, all right, 6.0 and 0 0.9, all right? So if you write as a decimal, that will be 6.9, all right? 6.0 plus 0 0.9 is equal to 6.9. All right, so the six hole is in your fraction, that is a whole number. And then your 0 0.9, again, is a one decimal place, so that will be 9 over 10. So you have 6 and 9 over 10. Well, is there a faster way to convert into fractions? Yes, there is. Well, if you see the number in front of the decimal point, that is the whole number. So in your fraction, you will also have the same whole number. And then the 0 0.9 will be 9 over 10. All right, so you have 6 and 9 over 10. All right, same thing for 8.4. The digit in front all right, of the decimal point, that is your whole number. So in your fraction, there'll be a whole number as well. Uh, so then you have 0 0.4. So this is a one decimal place. Right? If I break up so you can see more clearly, 8.0 and 0 0.4. So you change the 0 0.4 into a fraction, which is 4 over 10. And you need to simplify the fraction. So to simplify the fraction, you divide by 2. Right? Div divide the numerator and the denominator by 2. And then you will get 8 and 2 fifth, and which, the simpl which is the simplest form. Okay, so let's look at uh, bigger, right, more decimal places. So if I have two decimal places, then how to change into fraction? Then the denominator has to be 100, right, because there are two zeros. <laughs> two decimal places, there will be two zeros uh, in your denominator. So your fraction will be 7 out of 100. All right, in the next one, that will be 25 out of 100 because there are two decimal places, so you have two zeros. And uh, what's the simplest form? You can jump very big, right? jump big steps, and you just divide by 25, and you will get one quarter, which is the simplest form. Okay, let's go down to uh, some more. <coughs> 6.02, what's the mix, uh, what's the fraction? Well, again, if you have the digits in front of the decimal point, that is your whole number in your fraction, right? And then 0 0.02, right, what is the, okay, what is the fraction? So 0 0.02, you change it into fraction, which is 2 out of 100, okay, 2 over 100. And then always remember to change it to simplest form. So 2 divided by 2 and 100 divided by 2, and you will get 6 and 1 out of 50. All right, next one. So the 2.75, the 2 is the whole number, and 0 0.75, how do you write as a fraction? 75 out of 100, because there are two decimal places. So you must have two zeros. All right, change it to simplest form. So when you change to simplest form, nothing happens to the whole number. You just have to do, you just have to do something to the numerator and the denominator. So which means that, um, okay, let me just remove this thing. Okay, because it's, all right, let's start again. All right, so you have a, uh, you divide by, uh, you can always divide by two first, all right? But you can see that 75 cannot divide by two. So you divide by three. So there are a few tests, right? A few tests to see what, how to divide, how to make it simplest form. You divide by two, if cannot, then you divide by three. All right, so let me just erase this part again. <coughs> and just make sure that we do it properly. Okay, so let's, Okay, so let's try. So you have 2 and 75 over 100. So if I cannot divide by 2, I will divide by 3. And that is what you should do in your exam. All right, you divide by 2. If not, divide by 3. And you will get 25 
oh, I can't divide by 3. Okay, so that's a mistake there. So 100 cannot divide by 3. So it divide by 2 cannot, divide by 3 cannot. Then what's the next test? The next test is to divide by 5. All right, so, okay, let's do one more time. <laughs> 2 and 75 out of 100. All right, so divide by 2 cannot. So divide by 3 also cannot. So divide by 5. And yes, we can. So 25 divided by, 75 divided by 5 is uh, 15. All right, 15. Out of 100 divided by 5, that will be uh, 20. All right, then you continue to reduce the simplest form. You divide by 5 again. And you have 2 and 3 quarter. So that is your fraction in the simplest form. Okay? All right. So, so how to change into fraction? You look at the decimal places. If there's only one decimal place, then it's upon 10. If it's two decimal places, then it's upon 100. All right. Let's go to more decimal places. How about 0 0.003? Now, there are three decimal places. So it has to be 1,000 because 1,000 have... Uh, three zeros. So that will be 3 over 1,000. How about 0 0.025? That will be 25 out of 1,000. Okay, so again, uh, simplest form, cannot divide by 2, cannot divide by 3, so you divide by 5. So how to check, how do you simplify your fraction? You always start with 2, right, divide by 2, then you divide by 3, if still cannot, then divide by 5. So you have 5 out of 200. And then you continue to divide by 5 again, and you will get 1 out of 40, which is the simplest form already. Okay, now how about 2.002? .002? So any digit, all right, just a quick recap, any digit that's in front of your decimal point, that is a whole number. So in your fraction, you also have whole number, right? So the 2 is a whole number. And then there are three decimal places. So that will be 1,000. So what upon 1,000? 2 over 1,000. Now if you are confused, <coughs> what you do is you break up. The two holes is 2 or 2.0. And then the 0 0.002 as a fraction will be 2 out of 1,000. All right, so simplest form again. So you divide by 2 and you divide by 2 and you get 2, all right, the whole number, has no change. When you simplify any fraction, whole number doesn't change. It's the numerator and the denominator that will change. So 2 divided by 2 is 1, and uh, 1,000 divided by 2 is 500. So you have 2 and 1 over 500. Okay, let me just uh, make it nicer. All right, so you have 2 and 1 out of 500. All right, last one. Now, 6.035, 6 holes. All right, and then it's upon 1,000 because you have three decimal places and the numerator must be 35. All right, okay, so uh, divide by 5 and below also divide by 5. You get 7 out of 200. Can you divide some more? You can't. 7 cannot divide by 2, 7 cannot divide by 3, 7 cannot divide by 5 or so. So that's your simplest form. All right, so that's how you change uh, decimal into fractions. Not that hard. Okay, now we go to the four operations. All right, now when you add fractions, how do you add? Very easy. The first thing that you must take note is when you arrange the decimal, you have to make sure that the decimal point is one below the other. Like, can you see the zero point, right? The point two and the one point four. So when you add, make sure the decimal point is below, right below the other decimal point. And then you can plus them together, 6, and then decimal point and 1. So your answer will be 1.6. Okay, now let's try again, 8.4 plus 5. Now the 5 is not a decimal, so you need to change it into decimal. So how to change? 8.5, alright, if you do this, that is very wrong. Okay, because uh, the 5 is a, whole, is a whole number. So you need to change the whole number into a decimal. And how to do that? You just have to point zero, add a point zero, 5.0. Okay, and make sure that the decimal point is in a straight line. Okay, so when you arrange your digits, right, the decimal point must be one below the other. So you have 4 and 8 plus 5 is 13, and the decimal point is in a straight column. So you have 13.4. All 
Okay, so it's not that hard to do adding. Okay, let's do some more. How about 3.25 plus 6? Now, if every time you see a 6, that is a whole number. Whole number is not decimal. So how do you change the whole number into a decimal? You just put 0 0.0, 6.0. So if you put 6.0, you can see that there is something missing, right? There's a digit missing. There's an empty space there. So the empty space, you just add one more zero and become 6.00. And now you can plus them together. And do I need to draw lines? Uh, if you are good, then you don't need to draw. You just add the digits. So you have 5 plus 0, 2 plus 0. And the decimal point, just put below. And then 3 plus 6 is 9. So that will be 9.25. All right, another example. You have 7.75 uh, plus 2.2. All right, how do you put 2.2? You don't put 2.2 like this. This is wrong. All right, your decimal point must be one below the other. So this way is not correct. So you have to write 7.75 plus 2.2. So what's the guideline? The guideline is to make sure that your decimal point is in a straight line. All right, it's, in, it's one below the other. And then you see a blank space, and that is a zero. And then now you can plus them together. So you have 5, 9, and 7 plus 2 is 9. So your answer will be 9 point. 9.5. Okay, all right, let's come to subtraction. Same as your addition. So you have to make sure your decimal point is one below the other. So minus 0 point. So can you see the decimal point is one below the other? All right, and then 0 0.2, and then you can now subtract 6 decimal point 1. So answer 1.6. All right, 5.3 or 5.4. 5 minus 3. 3 is a whole number. You need to change it to a decimal. Just put a point 0. Become a decimal already. Alright, then you just uh, minus 4.0 and the decimal point and then you have 5 minus 3, 2. So that will be 2.4. So you can see that uh, if you notice carefully, right, how do you arrange your numbers? You arrange your decimal. Oops. Uh, okay, hang on. Alright, you arrange your decimal in a in a, you arrange your decimal point, make sure that it's in a, in a straight column. All right? And then how do you put the other digits? Uh, just put accordingly. All right, so 5.4 minus 3.0. You look at the decimal point, make sure that it's in one straight column. Okay, now let's go to another example. You have 4.35 minus 1.5. All right, so by now you know where to put 1.5 already. So you don't put 1.5 here. All right, this is wrong. So where should you put your 1.5? You should be putting your 1.5 over here. Okay, decimal point in a straight column. Put a zero in the blank space, right? And then now you can do your subtraction. So five minus zero, and three cannot minus five. So you borrow, and you lend. 30 minus five is eight, three minus one is two. So you have 2.85. All right, quickly, next one. Nine, nine holes. Change it into decimal. All right, nine. All right, you don't don't do don't do this. Okay, uh, if you do this, uh, nothing wrong. Nothing wrong with uh, doing this way. All right, what I would do is I would always all right instead of doing right this. Okay, which is nothing wrong. What I would do is I will always change the whole number to a decimal first. Once you change the whole number into a decimal, then you can continue to do your working. All right, then you can continue to write down minus. 2.92. Alright? Okay, so 9 holes change into a decimal, and that's how you get 9.00. Alright, and then borrow. Alright, and uh, here become 9, and then here become 8. Okay, so I won't go through how you borrow and how you lend. Alright, this is a primary 1, primary 2, so you can do it yourself. So 10 minus 2, 8. 9 minus 9, 0. And decimal point in, in the straight column. 8 minus 2, and you get 6. So your answer will be 6.08. Okay, so that's your subtraction and your addition. Okay, now let's go to how about multiplication. All right, uh, how to multiply numbers or how to multiply decimal? 0 0.4 times 6. Where do you put a 6? You put a 6 right towards the end. Okay, right towards the end. All right, and then, of course, you draw your two lines. Okay, now, when you multiply decimal, don't care about the decimal point. So ignore. Right, for example, uh, what, is, what, what do I mean? It means that uh, let's imagine there's no decimal point there. 
Okay, so don't care about the decimal point, and you have zero four times six, right? Which is a weird number, zero four times six. Okay, so let's multiply. Four times six, you get twenty four. Carry two, and then zero times six will be zero. Then you plus two, that will be twenty four, right? Okay, now now we put back the decimal point. You have zero point four, right? So that is a one decimal place. So which means that your answer will follow, will be the same as well, which is also one decimal place. So you will get two point four. All right. So zero point four times six will be two point four. All right. So you ignore the decimal point when you multiply. Okay. Another example, seven point six. So I don't care about the decimal point. All right. Don't care. So it'll be something like seventy six times four. Right. And then, uh, but this is dangerous, right? If you do this later on, you forgot to put the decimal point. But to help you to understand how to multiply, we we will ignore the decimal point. And once you know how to multiply, then then we don't need to take out the decimal point already. So six times four, twenty four, carry two. Seven times four, twenty eight. Then plus two and thirty. Now what happened if you don't care? Late you got the answer and then later you forget to put the decimal point. So that's also careless. So, uh, so, but this is to show you how to multiply first and then later on we are going to uh, not remove the decimal point because once you remove what happened, you may forget to put back the decimal point. <laughs> okay, all right. So this is a one decimal place. So your answer must also be the same, which is also one decimal place, and your answer is. Thirty point four. So what's the guideline here? Don't care about the decimal point when you multiply decimal. And once you get the answer, then what do you do? You follow, right? If it's one decimal place, your answer will also be one decimal place. Okay, let's go to another one. Okay, eight point seven nine times five. Okay, now uh, since we now know how to multiply already, so we don't have to remove the decimal point. Uh, but we don't care. Right, we don't care about the decimal point, so let's multiply. Nine times five is forty-five. Seven times five is thirty-five. Then plus four is thirty-nine. Ah, don't care about the de decimal point, so you don't put anything there. Don't put any decimal point yet. Then eight times five is forty. Forty plus three is forty-three. All right. Now, can you see that this is a two decimal place? Right, two decimal place. Right. So, which means that your answer will also be the same. Your answer will also be two decimal place. So, forty-three point nine five. Okay. All right. Let's do a bit faster. How about thirty-six point six five times seven? All right. So multiply. Don't care about the decimal point. Five times seven is thirty-five. Six times seven, forty-two. Forty-two plus three is forty-five. Right. Continue to multiply. Six times seven is forty-two. Plus four, you get forty-six. And then three times seven is twenty-one. Plus four is twenty-five. All right. Okay. Now, now you look at the decimal. All right. It is a two decimal place. Right. So your answer will also be two decimal place. So answer two five six point five five. Got it. So it's not very hard. All right. It's actually quite easy to plus, minus, and multiply decimal. Okay, now we come to something a little hard, which is dividing decimal. Okay, how do we divide decimal? Zero point eight divided by two. Now, same as your primary three, right? You have to write the number into the box, into the house. So, what number do you put into the house? The first, the first number, which is zero point eight. Then divide by two. All right. Now, uh, for those who attend attended my lesson, uh, what I will do is I will draw. Uh, I will draw columns. Okay, draw columns so that uh, you know how to divide, right? Step by step. Okay, so look at the first column. What times two equals zero? Zero times two, zero. Okay, so you you always start with the first column, and zero minus zero, nothing. All right. Uh, then you pull down the next digit. Where's the next digit? Which is the eight. You pull down, and you will get eight, right? Okay. Then you go to the second column. Which is the decimal point? Bring up the decimal point, okay? And then what do you do next? Then you go to the next column. What times two equal eight? So that will be four times two, eight. All right. And then you minus, you get remainder zero. So your answer is zero point four. So do we need to draw columns uh, every time? Uh, no. If you know how to divide, you can skip the columns. 
Okay, let's do one more time. 2.8 divided by 7. So the first number is always inside the house and divided by 4. So you draw your columns and uh, first column, what times 4 equal 2? 0 times 4. And you get 0, right? Minus and uh, bring down the next digit. That's what you did in your primary tree. And then because it's a decimal, so you go to the second column and you must put the decimal point there. So this time you have to put the decimal point, not at the end of it. All right. Like in multiplication, uh, you put the decimal point after you have gotten the answer. But when you do your division, as you are doing the dividing, you have to put your decimal point already. Okay. Otherwise you'll forget to put later. All right. Then what times four is twenty-eight? Seven times four is twenty-eight. So where do you put the eight over here? All right. How about the column in the middle? That is reserved for decimal point. So you don't have to put anything there. Okay, then you minus and remainder 0. So answer will be 0 0.7. Okay, quickly let's go on to another example. So you have uh, 6.3 divided by 6. And uh, if you are very good, no need to draw columns. 1 times 6, 6. 6 minus 6, 0. Pull down the next digit, that will be a 3. Am I correct? And there's a decimal point that you need to put on top before you continue to divide. And then what times 6 equals 3? That will be 0 times 6 equals 0. And there is a remainder, right? Okay, now, you are not allowed to write uh, 1.0 remainder 3. Because when you divide decimal, you have to keep doing until you don't get any remainder. Alright, so how to continue to keep dividing even though there is a remainder 3? What do you do? You just add one more 0. So now it becomes 6.30, right? And then now you can pull down the next digit, which is a 0. Alright, so you have 30 already. So what times 6 equal 30? So 5 times 6 is equal to 30. And your remainder is 0. So your answer is 1.05. So over here, what's so special? Uh, you have a remainder. And what do you do when you see a remainder? Add 1, 0, put it down, continue to divide until you don't get any remainder. Okay, let's go to another example. 75.2 and divide by 2. Okay, so what do we do? Alright, so if you are very confused, don't worry, you can draw lines. Okay, draw lines. Uh, if not, alright, if you know how to do, then you don't need to draw lines. Okay, so let's not draw lines and let's do slowly. So what times 2 equals 7? 3 times 2? 6. Now make sure that when you arrange your digits, they are in straight rows, straight columns, so that your digits don't slant. If you slant your digits, what happens? You make careless mistakes. You see the wrong thing. Alright, so 3 times 2 is 6. 7 minus 6 is 1. Pull down the next digit, alright, and you get 5. Okay? Alright? Okay, then what do you do next? Okay, let me try to remove this box. Uh, I, okay, let me see. Uh, okay. Okay, let me just erase everything. And okay, let's try again. All right, without the box, because the box is a distraction. Okay, now let's continue. All right, so one more time, let's do again. So 3 times 2, you have 6, then you minus. Okay, then 7 minus 6 is 1. Pull down the next digit, you get 5. Right, so you have 15. So what times 2 equal 15? So 7 times 2, uh, okay, you, you get 14. Okay, then you minus. Okay, let's ignore the box. And then, uh, and then what do you do? And then you have 15 minus 14, you get 1. And you put, and put down the next digit, which is uh, 2. All right? And then bring up the decimal point. All right? And then what do you get? And then what times 2 equal 12? That will be 6 times 2 equal 12. And you have a remainder 0. Okay? Remainder 0. Okay, now, uh, I would like to go through this one more time because, uh, okay, because of the, okay, you can see clearly now. Alright, so if you look at how you divide, you can see that the digits are all in straight columns. Very nice, in a straight column, so that you don't make any mistakes. Alright, so when you do dividing, you have to be very careful uh, because uh, how you arrange your digits are important. If you arrange if you put your digits in the wrong place or you slant slant your working then you will have hard time trying to work out correctly 
Okay, now let's do some more division, all right? So let's have some more practice. Okay, now how about two divided by three? Now, over here, there is no decimal. It's a whole number, two divided by three. So you have to change the whole number into a decimal. So that will be 2.0, okay? So you change it to, change it into a decimal, 2.0 and divide by three. So when do I do that? When do I change the whole number into a decimal? When you have a small number divided by a big number, then you know that you can't, you can't uh, it's hard to divide. How to divide a small number with a big number? Then you change the, the two, change the small number into a decimal. All right, and then you do divide. So let's try. Zero times three, zero. Two minus zero, two. Okay, and then you bring up the decimal point. All right, you must always bring up the decimal point before you continue dividing. Bring down the zero, and you have 20 already, right? And then uh, you have six times three, that'll be 18, and that is a remainder two. All right, so Ms. Tong say that you need to continue to divide until you get no remainder. <laughs> okay, uh, but in this question, you need to round off your answer to the nearest tenth or one decimal place. Now, common mistake that everybody has made is you need to round off the one decimal place, but your answer is not 0 0.6 because you didn't even round off, right? You need to round off before you get the answer. So you got the answer, which is 0 0.6 without rounding, so that's wrong. So how to have rounding? You just add one more zero, make your working answer to be two decimal place, then you pull down the zero and you get 20, and then six times three, you have 18, and that's a remainder two. All right, now you can stop, even though there's still a remainder, you can stop dividing because you have a two decimal place already. And now you can round off to one decimal place. So how do you round off to one decimal place? Just draw a line to show one decimal place, right? And then look at the six on the right side, it's five and bigger, at one. So your one decimal place will be 0 0.7. Okay, and by the way, uh, that should be the e it should be an estimation sign. Okay, not the equal sign. Equal sign means you get the actual answer, but rounding off, you don't get the actual answer. You get an estimated answer. All right, thirty-four divided by eight. Let's try. Let's try this now. Thirty-four divided by eight. You have a big number divided by a small number, so you may not want to change it into decimal yet because it's a big number divided by a small number. So you do your normal dividing. So what times eight equal fifty-four? So you have six times eight is 48. Then you minus, you get remainder six. All right, and then what do you do next? You need to get your answer as a decimal. So you change the whole number into a decimal. And then you pull down the zero and you bring up the decimal point, all right? And then you continue to divide. What times eight equals 60? Seven times eight is 56 and you get your remainder four. Now, take note, answer is not 0 0.7. Why? You have to round off. If you put down 6.7, you did not even do any rounding. There has to be some rounding. So how to do rounding? You add one more zero, all right, and bring down the zero, and then five times eight is 40, and your remainder is zero, and you can stop already. So you have working answer. Your working answer is two decimal place, so you now you can round off. So how to run off? You draw a line to show one decimal place, which is 6.7, that is your one decimal place. Look at the five, right, on the right side. Is it five and bigger? Yes, so 6.8. If it's five and bigger, add one on the next digit. So your answer is 6.8. And again, no equal sign, it is supposed to be estimation sign. Okay, all right, let's go down some more. How about 3.1 divided by eight? Okay, more practice. Now, 3.1 divided by eight. Okay, now, over here, what do we do? Now, you have to, uh, if you have to take what times eight equal three, all right? Or if you are confused, don't worry, draw columns. Okay, draw columns if you are still confused. Look at the first column, right, first column. What times eight equal three? Zero, okay, zero times eight. So every time you don't know how to do, or you forgot what you learned, then draw columns. Then you go column by column. Right? So 3 minus 0 is 3, bring up the decimal point, and then pull down the next digit, which is your 1, and then you have what times 8 equal 31, so that will be 3 times 8, you get 24, 
then you minus, right? So 31 minus 4, you will get 7, a remainder 7. All right, so what do you do? Now, you need to continue to divide, all right, to, to round off to one decimal place. So you just add one more zero, and you pull down the zero, and then you have, okay, let me draw another column, okay? So what times 8 equals 70? So 8 times 8 is 64, all right? So put below 70, and then you minus, you get a remainder 6. All right, and you can stop there already. Why? Because you need to run off to one decimal place, so you have two decimal places and you can round off, you can round off to one decimal place. So to round off to one decimal place, what do you do? Now, you just have to look at, all right, 0 0.38. Okay, let me just try over here. So 0 0.38, how do you round off to one decimal place? Draw a line, okay, and look at the digit eight. Is it five and bigger? Yes, at one. So that'll be 0 0.4. So your one decimal place will be 0 0.4, which is your rounding off your rounded answer. Okay, all right, so let's, one more example. Okay, let's look at one more example. Now, 7.45 and divide by nine. All right, so if you're confused, draw columns. Okay, draw columns to show, okay, to show what? To show the different digits. Then look at the first column and uh, zero times nine, zero. Okay, so go step by step, column by column. Seven minus zero, seven. Bring up the decimal point, bring down the next digit, okay? And then what times 9 is 74? 8 times 9 is 72, which is very near to 74, minus, and then 74 minus 72, you get 2. Bring down the 5, all right? And then next column, what times 9 is 25? So you have 2 times 9, 18, all right? Always put below the previous number, and then 25 minus 18, you will get remainder seven. All right, stop there, because you need to run off to one decimal place. So every time you need to run off to one decimal place, your answer, working answer, will have to be two decimal places. So 0 0.82, right, two decimal places. How to run off to one? Draw a line, all right? And uh, two is five and lesser, right? So you don't add one on the next digit. So it's 0 0.8. So your rounded answer is 0 0.8. Okay, and that's how you round off to one decimal place. So dividing decimal is not is something similar to your primary tree division, just that you have a decimal point inside. Okay, so let's go to the last lesson now, last part, and we need to round off to two decimal place. Oh, that's a mistake. Nearest hundred means two decimal places. All right, you have to round off to two decimal places. Okay, so let's look at forty-four divided by nine. So if you have a big number divided by small number, uh, then you don't need to change the whole number into a decimal yet, right? Uh, so let's divide. What times 9 is 44? So that will be 4 times 9 is 36. Why not 5? Because 5 times 9 is 45. That is bigger than 44. All right, so you minus, you get 8. That's a remainder, right? So how to, co how to continue to divide? Change the whole number into a decimal pull down the next digit and don't forget to bring up the decimal point and then 9 times 8 or 8 times 9 you get 72 and you get remainder 8 now take note answer is not 4.8 you need you need to get in you need to run off the two decimal place so you have to continue dividing so add one more zero pull down all right and then you have a uh, 8 times 9 again you get 72 and remainder again. All right, and be very careful now, your answer is not 4.88 because you didn't do any rounding off. So if you don't round off, it means that something is missing, right? You need to round off. So you have to continue to add one more zero and pull down the zero, and then eight times nine, you get 72 again, and you still get the same remainder, but you can stop already because now you have three decimal places which you can now round off to two decimal place. So how do you round off? Okay, so how does two decimal place look like? It will look like this, 4.88, right? That is your two decimal place, right? So look at the eight on the right side, it's five and bigger, so you need to add one on the, on the next digit. 
All right, so you look at the eight here, right? If it's five and bigger, add one on the next digit. And your two decimal place will be 4.89. Okay, all right, let's do some more. 0 0.7 divided by nine. So 0 0.7 divided by nine. If you're confused how to do your dividing, then draw columns. Okay, draw your columns. All right, and what times nine equals zero? Zero times nine. All right, first column, right? First column, zero times nine, zero. Minus zero. Uh, you can put up the decimal point and don't forget to bring down the next digit. And what times nine equals seven? Still zero, right? So zero times nine is still zero. And you get seven. All right, how do you continue to, how do you continue to divide? You add one more zero, all right? Add one more zero over here. So one more zero. And you pull down the zero. And then what times nine equals 70 or very near to 70? Seven times nine is 63. Then you minus, okay? And you get a remainder seven again. All right, now you can see that your working answer is 0 0.07, which is not the answer yet. You need to continue to add one more zero to make it three decimal places. So pull down the next zero. And then seven times nine, you get 63 again. And now your remainder is still seven. Okay, all right. All right, and you can stop already. Okay, so how do you run off to two decimal place? So you look at, okay, you have 0 0.077, or let me put over here. All right, and how do you run off to two decimal place? Draw a line, and seven is five and bigger, so add one, all right? So look at the digit on the other side, all right, near, which is seven, right? So look at the seven. Is it five and bigger? Yes. Add one on the next digit. And your one and your two decimal place will be 0 0.08. Okay? And that is how you round off your answer. Okay, now two more. Okay, so maybe you may want to pause the video and then try to do it on your own before you check, before you look at the video. So maybe you want to pause. Alright, so once you're ready you can play back the video. Alright. But anyway, let's okay. Let's let's continue and see whether do you get the answer correct. If you have paused the video, okay. Now, so what times three equal nine? So three times three minus. Bring up the decimal point. Bring down the next digit. One times three, three minus. Get the remainder. And how to continue dividing? Add one more zero. Pull down the zero. And then three times three, nine. Th there's a remainder again, right? Answer is not 3.13. You need to round off. Remember, you have to round off. So how to round off? You need to get three decimal places. So add one more zero and pull down the next zero. And then three times three is nine again. So your remainder is one. All right, so how to round off? Okay, very easy. You want to round off the two decimal place. So you draw a line. All right, so 3.133, look at the three here. Is it five and bigger? No, so you don't add one. So there'll be still 3.13, okay? And that is how you round off to two decimal places. Now, if you forget your rounding off, go back to the previous video and watch the previous video, all right? Okay, last one. All right, how about 1.722 divided by eight? or 1.72 divided by eight? So if you are good already, then you don't need to draw the column. But if you are not good or still not sure, all right, then let's draw the column, okay? So I will show you one last time. So 1.72 divided by eight. All right, so how to draw columns? Columns for every digit and also for the decimal point, okay? All right, so look at the first column. Zero times eight, zero. Then you minus. So one minus zero is one. Bring up the decimal point pull down the next digit, and what times eight equals 17? So two times eight will be 16. So put it below the 17, minus, and you get one, right? Then pull down the next digit, which is two. Then one times eight is eight, all right? And uh, minus again, you get four. That's the remainder, right? And answer is not 0 0.21. You need to add one more zero, so let's extend the lines a little bit and let's add one more zero okay and pull down the zero 
and now you have 5 times 8 is 40 and you minus and your remainder is now 0 okay so can we run off now yes we can run off so you have 0 0.215 so let me put 0 0.215 to round off to two decimal places you draw a line and you can see the 5 the 5 is 5 and bigger so add 1 and you will get 0 0.22 and that's how you round off. Okay? And it's not equal sign, it's estimation sign. How does estimation sign look like? Like this, right? It's like a wavy, a wavy sign. It means that your answer is not the actual answer, but it is the estimated answer. Okay, so we have come to the four operations, right, on how to plus, minus, times and divide. And we also learn how to convert the decimal into fractions. So with that, we have come to the end of the decimal lesson. Alright? So this this lesson, these two lessons on decimal are very important because when you come to P5, you will be tested on decimal again. You'll be tested on how to divide, uh, how to divide numbers to produce your decimal, and you'll be tested on how to change the fraction into decimal and vice versa. So when you come to P5, there will be uh, a number of questions in your paper one, right? Paper one, uh, which is the one hour test, uh, you will see a number of questions uh, that will test you on decimal. And this is the part of the lesson, or these two lessons, uh, uh, I will say uh, they are very important to, to understand. So if you don't quite know your decimal, it is important that you come back and look at these two lessons again, right? How to round off, how to, uh, how to, how to change the how to change the decimal into fraction and so on okay all right so we come to the end of decimal lesson so next week we will look at a new topic all right so stay tuned for the next lesson